Hey guys, just an update on the Packard Bell. Uh, I tr I tried to get to clone the drive, the West tried. Bleh, I tried to clone the uh, Mac Store eight gig drive to this Western Digital eight gig drive, and I was successful. All I had to do was reinstall the bootloader, and as you can see, it's booted back the way it was yesterday. Now I just need to install the sound drivers and a bunch of software, and we're all set to go. So. This is all hunky dory. I'll save the Mac Store as a backup drive and use the Western Digital as the main drive because I would prefer to use this drive actually. Just because I th these drives never die ever. Mac Store drives die left and right. So confidence goes a long way, I suppose. But either way, up and running with the drive I want. Thanks to the help of Windows 98 CDs. Here's just an example of some of the software I'm going to put on here. So, let's get to installing, reinstalling the sound driver again so that we actually get sound out of this. One thing I've always liked about desktop form factor machines is that a lot of, a lot of the time things come in a cage, and this Packer Bell is no exception. All this stuff comes out as sort of one whole unit, which is, makes it real handy for working on it. So flip all this over and get to the hard drive right there. So I'll take the Maxter drive out and we'll put the Western Digital drive in. This is the drive that I'm using by the way. It's a Western Digital Caviar 28400. It's an 8 gigabyte hard drive. I got this in a, in a computer that Grateful 42 gave me. And these drives are robust. They last forever. Maxter drives, not so much. So I'm, I'm going to keep this, though, because it's definitely valuable to have another drive around, so it, it will it'll work if I need it. But this is the ideal drive, and I have it, so I'm going to use it. Here are the two drives. We have the 8-gig Mac store here that, was in, that Billy shipped me in the machine, uh, so he could give me an installation of, uh, out of the box, which is nice. So I cloned it from that onto this drive, and then... All I had to do to this drive was reinstall the bootloader off of a Windows 98 CD, and then bada bing bada boom, it works. So I'm going to keep this drive around actually with that Windows 95 installation on it, so if this drive ever goes bad, I can either use this drive or clone this drive to another one. So this will be sort of the archival install drive, uh, if that makes any sense. So there you go. Both of these drives are from the same time period actually. Both are from around 1999. This was from February 1999, this one's from July 1999, so, you know, around the same time frame. So, let's stick a, a drive in here. Screw it in. Okay, I buttoned that back up. Turn the machine back on. While that's booting. Gotta get the sound card drivers, there they are. I found these old Sony CDRWs just lying around somewhere. So I decided to use them and they work great. This, this drive reads them and everything. Put the sound card drivers on here. These are old CDRWs I got from a recycling center up in uh, Vermont, actually. I got these when, uh, when I was in my old college. That was, that was a great place. I got a lot of sound cards and stuff from there as well. These are 650 meg, so they're a little old, but they work. It's not like 650 meg stops me from doing anything on a computer like this. So we let this boot up, and then we'll put the sound card drivers in. All right, let's do this. Makes me glad I got these discs all those years ago. How how often do you see a, a CD-ROM drive with plastic things like this. Remember that when uh, drives used to sit vertically would stabilize the disc? I haven't seen that in a long time. But yes, let's install the sound card drivers in here and get some DOS games on this thing. So, go into my computer, go into the, uh, go into here. All I really needed was, uh, SB9X setup, I think. So, what I think I might do is just whew, whew, whew. 
make a folder on the desktop and just call it drivers. You know, just do that. Mmm, clicky. <laughs> so I'll drag all this stuff into here. Nope, I forgot. It's Windows 95. You gotta copy it. I always forget that for some reason. Very fast copying there. Alright, extract that. Now there's files everywhere and it's a complete mess, so change it to details. That's better. And just to get the sound card driver working is like the simplest process in the world, even on Windows 95. All you do is double click on that. That loads all the driver information and that's really it. Take the CD out. Then all you have to do is restart the computer. First sign of life there. You heard the ta-da, so... Sound is most definitely working. Alright, I made sure no error messages pop up when I boot. Let's do a boot with the sound. Oh yeah, you can hear that Western Digital Drive just clunk when you first turn it on. I love those drives. One thing I'm impressed with so far with this Packer Bell is how quiet it is. I would have thought a computer from this era would have been a little bit louder, but all you, but the the uh, power supply fan is quiet. There's no CPU fan. Only thing you can really hear any is the hard drive. Windows 95. Yay, sound. Welcome from Packard Bell. We offer you two computing environments to choose from, Packard Bell's Navigator or Microsoft Windows. You may also begin by taking a quick lesson on using the mouse. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I gotta learn how to use the mouse. I gotta make that video. Now that I have sound, I should make that video at some point. All right, so here we are in Windows. Sweet. I think it is completely necessary. I think it's completely necessary to play Canyon from a Sound Blaster All 32. There you go. That's the that's the that's what the all thirty two can do in Windows ninety five. So games are going to sound fantastic. I think it's time to put a few on here. Well, it looks like I might need a graphics card after all because look at all this artifacting and crap. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here, but that just looks terrible. <laughs> so I might need to put a graphics card in here to fix the that problem. But the music sounds great. MIDI. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on there. Might just be that game. I'll, f I'll have to figure it out. Alright, so the onboard video is not ideal for 3D Ultra Pinball. I've tried some other games and they work fine. It's just that one. Just strange. Well, this NVIDIA card was a rip-roaring failure in this machine. It would just peep and complain. It would go beep, 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 which 
which indicates a video error in a Packard Bell motherboard. So, clearly it didn't like this card. This is a Riva TNT2. What I suspect is that this card just uses too much power, so the motherboard didn't like that very much. Uh, so, I'm thinking a Rage 128 is probably the best bet for this machine. The S, as it uses S3 video for the onboard, which is why I, I'm getting art, I was getting artifacting and 3D Ultra Pinball. So, I'm thinking of getting a Rage 128 for this machine, and, uh, That'll just the Rage 128 is an amazing chip, so I think it'll run everything I need just fine. Plus, it'll have a little bit of 3D capability, I think. Not much, but enough to get by, I think. So, as long as that works, it's fine. I'm not going to worry too much about it. As you can see, I've already installed Age of Empires too, so you know I'm going to be playing a lot of that. So this has been setting up the Packard Bell so far. Uh, so far, so good. The only the only hiccup I've had has been with the graph been uh, upgrading graphics cards, but that just means I got to do some eBay shopping. Otherwise, though, other games work fine. I tried Zoom Beanies. I tried a bunch of edutainment games. I tried Zoom Beanies. That works fine. SimCity 2000 works fine. SimCity Classic works fine. After Dark works fine. Only game I've had an issue with has been 3D Ultra Pinball, and that's because of the S3 graphics adapter. I think so. Just that one game is having issues, so it's not a huge deal, but I would like to fix that. So, a Rage 128 is probably in the cards. So, yeah, that's been setting it up so far. I'm going to continue installing games. Get this party started. Copying all my DOS games over off of the CD. Oh, wow, you can actually see the cell phone artifacts in the screen. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, that's from uh, GSM noise getting into the picture tube, I guess. Picture tube signal. But yeah, copying all the uh, all the DOS games off of this CD. Look at the hard drive turning away, and the D and the CD drive turning away. Duke Three D Atomic Edition. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna play some Duke Nukem. So, I'll show you guys some DOS games running on here, just, just to show you what the capabilities of the onboard graphics with DOS games are. I'm pretty sure it'll work fine, because the only issue I've had so far has been with 3D Ultra Pinball, like before, so... Yeah, I don't think it'll be too big of an issue after a while. Yeah, Doom works. Need to set up the sound card though so I can get music. Uh, 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 uh. All thirty-two. There. What the hell, still no music. Yeah. Okay, we're going to stare at the floor for a while. Because <laughs> there's a lot of noise going on down by the, by where the computer is. But I installed a bunch of CD-ROM games on the Packard Bell. Uh, all the CD-ROM games seem to work pretty well. I installed Half-Life and Opposing Force on there as well. I haven't tested those out yet, but I bet they'll work fine because they run in software mode. Um, so I get to listen to the scientists go... My God, what are you doing? <laughs> That's going to be fun. Uh, what else did I install? A lot of it was the point-and-click stuff from when I was a kid. Um, I tried to install Warcraft 2, but uh, that th that's an, an issue I have with the DOS games. The DOS games uh, aren't detecting the AWE32 card at all for some reason, so I think I need to get some DOS drivers going, and I need to fix... Uh, I just need to fix it and make it work, and I gotta figure all that out. I'm not familiar with uh, DOS that much, so I got a lot to learn <laughs> about how to make all that work. Um, this NVIDIA card was kind of a rip roaring failure, so what I plan to do is to get a, an ATI Rage 128 for the machine, PCI version of the card, uh, so I can uh, get some better video out of it so I don't have issues with it <clears throat> like I did with 3D Ultra Pinball.
So, that's what I've done with the machine so far. It still needs some work, but that's what I've done so far. It needs a video card, and it needs uh, the audio drivers fixed and working properly. Uh, I've noticed that DOS on Windows 95 is a little bit finicky to work with compared to 98, so, you know, not everything just works. So, there you have it, folks. Uh, there'll be more videos once I get the thing up and running. I'll show you some games running on it more than just the ones that it glitched up like that. So, there you have it, folks. Hope you enjoyed the video, and have a good one, everybody. Ciao.